nunca. Pero las peleas deben terminar. In the 1950s, casting for television series was a meticulous process. Wagon Train, a popular 1957 TV series, was no exception. The show's producers, including Roy Huggins and Sterling Siliphant, sought to create a compelling Western drama that would capture audiences with its character-driven stories and historical context. For the role of Major Seth Adams, the show's lead, the producers chose veteran actor Ward Bond. Bond's extensive experience in Western films and his authoritative presence made him an ideal fit for the role. His chemistry with the other actors was undeniable, contributing significantly to the show's success. The part of Barnabas Collins, the wagon master, went to Robert Horton. Horton's boyish charm and strong screen presence made him a perfect counterbalance to Ward Bond's stern demeanor. His audition showcased his ability to convey the character's resilience, determination, and compassion. For the role of Bill Hawks, the quartermaster, the producers selected Terry Wilson. Wilson's easygoing charm and comedic timing provided a welcome contrast to the more serious characters. His audition demonstrated his ability to bring depth and humor to the role. The character of Flint McCullough, a scout, was played by Frank McGrath. McGrath's extensive experience in Western films and his ability to portray a rugged yet sensitive character won him the role. His chemistry with the other actors was evident in their scenes together. Lastly, the role of Cooper Smith, a trail hand, was given to Michael Burns. Burns' youthful innocence and raw talent were apparent during his audition. His character added a layer of complexity to the show's narrative, contributing to its enduring appeal. Throughout the casting process, the producers focused on finding actors who could bring depth and authenticity to their roles. They looked for chemistry between the actors, understanding that the success of a television series often depends on the relationships between its characters. The casting of Wagon Train was a testament to their commitment to creating a compelling and engaging show. Te pudran. Mar, te dije que lo sentía cuando perdiste a tu hijo, y es verdad. Pero tienes que... The director of the 1957 TV series Wagon Train, Virgil W. Vogel, brought a unique vision to the show. He was influenced by classic Western films and aimed to create a realistic and immersive experience for viewers. Vogel's approach was characterized by his attention to detail and commitment to historical accuracy to bring the story to life. Vogel worked closely with the cast and crew. He collaborated with the writers to ensure that the scripts were true to the time period and that the characters were well developed. Vogel also worked closely with the actors, guiding them in their performances and helping to create authentic and engaging characters. In terms of style, Vogel favored a straightforward and unpretentious approach. He believed that the story and characters should be the focus rather than flashy camera work or special effects. Vogel's direction was marked by a sense of realism and a deep understanding of the Western genre. Vogel's creative influences included classic Western directors such as John Ford and Howard Hawks. He was also influenced by the work of pioneering TV directors such as Rod Serling and Patty Chayefsky. Vogel drew inspiration from these artists, but always sought to put his own unique stamp on the material. Overall, Vogel's directorial vision for Wagon Train was marked by his commitment to realism, historical accuracy, and character development. He worked closely with the cast and crew to bring the story to life, and his influence can be seen in every episode of the series. No puedo dejar que alcance su caravan en el Fuerte Spear. Así que por lo que a mí me toca fue capturado con un contacto. Wagon Train was a popular TV series that aired from 1957 to 1965, with a total of 284 episodes. The show was set in the late 1800s and followed a group of settlers as they traveled across the American West in a wagon train facing various challenges and adventures along the way. The series featured many notable actors, including Ward Bond, who played the wagon master, Major Seth Adams, and Robert Horton, who played the scout, Flint McCullough. Other famous guest stars included John Wayne, Bette Davis, and Clint Eastwood. Throughout the series, there were many funny, shocking, and sad moments that made it unforgettable. From humorous misunderstandings to heart-wrenching goodbyes, Wagon Train had it all. Do you have a favorite role or actor from Wagon Train? Perhaps you have a cherished memory or personal experience related to the show. We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. 
Stay tuned for some fascinating facts about Wagon Train that you might not know. Claver. Si no le molesta Macolor, preferiría hablar sobre otra cosa, ¿sí? Usted... In the 1950s, the production of the TV series Wagon Train was a major endeavor. The show, set in the 1800s, followed a group of pioneers as they journeyed across the American West in covered wagons. The set design was meticulously crafted to recreate the feel of the 19th century. Each wagon was built to exacting standards, with painstaking attention to detail. The production team even went so far as to age the wagons, giving them a weathered, well-traveled look. The show was primarily filmed on sound stages, but location shoots were not uncommon. These often took place in the California desert, where the team would recreate the wide open plains and rugged mountains of the Old West. Filming in these remote locations presented numerous logistical challenges, from securing permits to ensuring the cast and crew had access to food, water, and shelter. One innovative technique employed during the production of Wagon Train was the use of front projection. This allowed the team to project pre-recorded backgrounds onto a screen, creating the illusion of a vast, open landscape. This was particularly useful during location shoots, where the team could create the appearance of a sprawling wilderness even in a confined space. Despite the challenges, the production team of Wagon Train managed to create a compelling, authentic vision of the Old West. The show's success was a testament to their hard work and dedication, and it remains a beloved piece of television history. Maggie es una chica instruida. Sí. Era maestra ya en su tierra. Y se casó con un... Wagon Train is a 1950s TV western with 39 episodes in its first season, each running for 50 minutes. I found the overall majority of these episodes to be tightly scripted and believable with authentic Old West settings and convincing performances from the actors. Although some episodes may seem lengthy, the show is definitely worth watching for any fan of classic westerns. I especially enjoyed the performances of Robert Horton and Terry Wilson, who played major roles in the series. The show's writing and production values hold up well, even by today's standards. Whether you're a longtime fan of westerns or new to the genre, Wagon Train is a great choice that will keep you engaged from beginning to end. Quería verme mayor. Sí, el señor Hammond quiere hablar con usted. The creation of a musical score and soundtrack is an essential aspect of filmmaking, and this was no different for the 1957 TV series Wagon Train. The music was composed to complement the narrative and emotional tone of the show, which followed a group of pioneers traveling westward in the mid-19th century. Two main composers worked on the series Albert Glasser and Jerry Goldsmith. Glasser composed the main title theme, which was a rousing, adventurous piece that set the tone for the series. He also composed music for many of the episodes, using a mix of orchestral and western styles to capture the spirit of the American frontier. Jerry Goldsmith, who would later become one of Hollywood's most renowned composers, also contributed to the series. He composed music for several episodes, often using unconventional instruments and techniques to create a unique sound. For example, in the episode The John Cameron Story, Goldsmith used a glass harmonica to create a haunting, otherworldly atmosphere. The music in Wagon Train served several purposes. It helped to establish the setting and time period, and it also heightened the emotional impact of the scenes. The composers used music to underscore the characters' emotions, to build tension, and to provide a sense of resolution. For example, in the episode The Sacramento Story, the music swells as the wagon train arrives in Sacramento, reflecting the character's sense of accomplishment and excitement. In contrast, in the episode The Maggie Hamilton Story, the music is more subdued and melancholy, reflecting the character's sadness and loss. The musicians involved in the creation of the wagon train score and soundtrack were highly skilled and dedicated to their craft. They worked closely with the composers and the show's producers to ensure that the music perfectly matched the tone and mood of each episode. In conclusion, the musical score and soundtrack of Wagon Train were essential components of the series, enhancing the narrative and emotional tone of each episode. The composers and musicians involved in the creation of the music brought a high level of skill and creativity to their work, resulting in a memorable and enduring soundtrack that continues to captivate audiences today. Esta taza y creo que es muy bonita. 
Me recuerda mucho a mi hogar. Es parte. Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, was inspired by the TV show Wagon Train, describing his original concept as Wagon Train to the stars. The show's writer, Gene L. Kuhn, penned 23 episodes. Wagon Train marked Ward Bond's final acting project as he passed away during the fourth season. His character, Major Seth Adams, disappeared without explanation. The series was preceded by the film Wagon Master, where Bond played a similar character, serving as inspiration for the show. One of the most iconic scenes in the 1957 TV series Wagon Train is from the episode The John Cameron Story. In this scene, the character John Cameron, played by actor Frank Overton, sacrifices himself to save the wagon train from a Native American attack. The direction in this scene is masterful, with the use of close-ups and wide shots to capture the intensity of the attack and the emotional turmoil of the characters. The pacing is perfect, building tension and suspense as the attack escalates. Overton's performance is exceptional, conveying Cameron's bravery and selflessness in the face of danger. His portrayal is both moving and inspiring, leaving a lasting impact on the audience. The cinematography is also noteworthy, with sweeping shots of the landscape and the wagon train adding to the sense of adventure and danger. The use of natural light and shadows enhances the mood and atmosphere of the scene. This scene has had a significant impact on audiences, highlighting the themes of bravery, sacrifice, and community. It has become one of the most memorable moments in the series and is often cited as a standout example of Overton's acting prowess. According to Overton, it was a challenging scene to film, but I felt a deep connection to the character and wanted to do justice to his story. I think the direction, cinematography, and performances all came together to create something truly special. Overall, this iconic scene from Wagon Train is a testament to the power of great storytelling, exceptional performances, and masterful filmmaking. It is a moment that has resonated with audiences for generations and continues to inspire and captivate viewers to this day. Creía que algo podría haberte pasado. ¿Qué podría pasar? Robert Horton, the star of Wagon Train, had a consistent look in the series as well as in A Man Called Shenandoah. He rode the same chestnut Appaloosa and wore the same gun belt similar to John Wayne's choice in some of his movies, before becoming a regular cast member in 1963 as Barnaby West. Michael Burns made five guest appearances, each time playing a different character. During its first season, the show was sponsored by the Edsel division of the Ford Motor Company. Empezado a atacarnos nadie. Alguien se movió por ahí. Estoy seguro que alguien anda por ahí. Vuelvan a sus puestos y abran bien los ojos. The 1957 TV series Wagon Train was popular and influential in its time, attracting large audiences and leaving a lasting impact on popular culture. The show followed a group of pioneers as they traveled across the American West in covered wagons during the mid-19th century. Audiences were drawn to the exciting adventures and relatable characters, which often reflected the values and experiences of Middle America. The show's themes of perseverance, community, and self-discovery resonated with viewers and provided a sense of escapism during a time of great cultural change. Wagon Train also contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. The show explored issues of diversity, equality, and justice, often featuring characters from different racial and ethnic backgrounds. This representation was groundbreaking for the time and helped to challenge stereotypes and promote understanding. In addition to its cultural impact, Wagon Train also had a significant influence on pop culture. The show's iconic theme song, Wagon Train, became a hit single and is still recognized today. The show also inspired a number of other popular Western TV series and films, including Gunsmoke and Bonanza. Overall, Wagon Train was a powerful and enduring cultural force that resonated with audiences, influenced pop culture, and contributed to important discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. Its impact can still be felt today, and it remains an important part of television history. ¿Algún lugar donde pueda buscarlo? Amigo. In the case of the TV series Wagon Train from the 1950s, several episodes have entered the public domain 
including the Malachi Hobart story, the Dr. Denker story, and alias Bill Hawks. The character Charlie Wooster, played by Robert Horton, was often referred to as Chuck, a nickname for Charles or Charlie. Interestingly, Horton worked with many of his friends on other productions, such as John Smith on Laramie, John McIntyre, and Denny Miller on Wagon Train, and Julie London and Bobby Troop on Emergency. Robert Fuller, another actor on Wagon Train, also had the opportunity to work with friends on various projects. These connections and the enduring popularity of Wagon Train attest to the show's lasting impact on television history. Desde hacerlo, prefiero morir. Pero hay veces que me da terror. Wagon Train, a 1957 television series, received positive reviews from critics and audiences alike. The show, which followed a wagon train traveling through the American West, was praised for its strong storytelling and well-developed characters. In a review for the New York Times, critic Jack Good wrote that Wagon Train was a consistently engrossing and often exciting adventure in the annals of the Old West. He commended the show's authentic settings and believable characters, as well as the competent acting of the cast. Audiences also responded positively to the show. According to ratings data from the time, Wagon Train was one of the most watched programs on television during its first season. Many viewers appreciated the show's historical focus and its depiction of the challenges and triumphs faced by pioneers in the American West. Wagon Train was also recognized with several awards and nominations. The show received four Emmy Award nominations, including for Outstanding Dramatic Series and for the performances of several of its actors. It also won a Golden Globe Award for Best Television Series in 1958. These accolades were significant for those involved in the production of Wagon Train. Winning awards and receiving positive reviews from critics and audiences helped to establish the show as a high-quality program and solidified its place in the annals of television history. The awards and nominations also brought recognition and acclaim to the actors and other professionals who worked on the show, helping to further their careers and contributing to their reputations as talented and accomplished individuals in the entertainment industry. Un par de días al menos. Tendremos que correr el riesgo. Denny Miller is best known for his role as Duke Shannon on the television series Wagon Train Robert Horton. The original star of the show and his replacement, Robert Fuller, share the same birthday, July 29th, but were born six years apart. During the filming of Wagon Train, Martin Landau, a Jewish actor from New York, had an unpleasant experience with co-star Ward Bond. Bond, unaware of Landau's religious background, threw a real punch during a fight scene instead of a fake one, causing injury to Landau. Tal vez él tenga una familia. Tal vez también tenga un hijo. Y tal vez pueda probar. During the filming of Wagon Train, the 1957 TV series, the cast and crew faced many challenges and shared memorable experiences. The show's creator, Roy Huggins, aimed to create a realistic portrayal of the westward expansion in the United States during the mid-19th century. One of the most compelling anecdotes from the set involved the lead actor, Ward Bond, who played Major Seth Adams. Bond was a former college football player and had a larger-than-life personality. He was known for his practical jokes and camaraderie with the cast and crew. However, Bond's heart gave out during a location shoot in 1960 and he passed away suddenly. The show paid tribute to Bond by having Major Adams die heroically while saving a wagon train from an attack. Another interesting anecdote from the set involved the young actor, Robert Horton, who played Flint McCullough. Horton was a former dancer and had a unique physicality that set him apart from other leading men of the time. He was known for his meticulous preparation and attention to detail, often spending hours rehearsing his scenes. Horton's dedication paid off, and he became a fan favorite, receiving thousands of fan letters each week. The show's producers were also known for their commitment to historical accuracy. They hired consultants to ensure that the show's props, costume, and sets were authentic to the period. The show's writers also did extensive research to create realistic and engaging storylines. As a result, Wagon Train became one of the most popular and enduring TV shows of the 1950s and 1960s. Despite the challenges of filming on location and the pressures of producing a weekly TV show, the cast and crew of Wagon Train remained close-knit and dedicated to their work. 
They often worked long hours, enduring harsh weather conditions and other hardships, but they did so with a sense of camaraderie and purpose. The show's legacy continues to inspire and entertain audiences today, a testament to the enduring appeal of the Western genre and the talent and dedication of the people who brought it to life. Robert Horton, known for his role as Flint McCullough on Wagon Train, had previously worked with James Best in episodes of both Wagon Train and The Barbara Stanwyck Show. Before joining Horton on Wagon Train, John McIntyre had guest starred in Laramie episodes featuring Robert Fuller. In a casting decision for Wagon Train, Robert Horton was selected over John Smith to develop the character of Flint McCullough based on the Gene Lebeck story. These connections show how actors from Wagon Train collaborated in various productions before and after the series. Me dite usted sick. ¿Qué tal si su esposa lo supiera? Wagon Train, a 1957 television series, holds a significant place in film history as a popular and long-running Western show. It was influential in its depiction of the American frontier and the struggles of settlers during their westward journey. The show's success led to a wave of Western-themed TV series and movies, leaving a lasting impact on the film industry. Wagon Train's episodic format, focusing on individual stories within the larger narrative, inspired future filmmakers to explore anthology-style storytelling. This approach allowed for a diverse range of themes and characters contributing to the show's enduring appeal. The series also had a substantial impact on the development of television as a storytelling medium. By emphasizing character development and emotional depth, Wagon Train helped to establish the potential for TV shows to offer more than just superficial entertainment. This focus on character-driven narratives can be seen in many modern television series. Furthermore, Wagon Train served as a stepping stone for numerous actors, providing them with a platform to showcase their talents and further their careers. The show's success can be attributed, in part, to the strong performances of its cast members, many of whom became household names. In summary, Wagon Train's lasting legacy lies in its contributions to film history, its impact on future filmmaking, and the inspiration it provided to subsequent works. The series played a crucial role in shaping the television landscape, paving the way for more complex and character-driven narratives. A veces muchos hombres solo sirven para estorbarse. Robert Fuller's career is linked to Universal Studios, where he starred in Wagon Train, Laramie, and Emergency. Interestingly, he worked with Dan Duryea in both Laramie and Wagon Train, as well as in the movie Incident at Phantom Hill. On the other hand, Robert Horton, before co-starring with Frank McGrath in Wagon Train, had McGrath as a stuntman in Pony Soldier and Apache War Smoke. Horton even owned the Appaloosa horse he frequently rode in both series. These connections showcase the interconnectedness of classic television and film. The theme music for the TV series Wagon Train was adapted from the Jerome Morris score of the film The Jayhawkers and is one of the most well-known Western TV theme songs. Contrary to some claims, Robert Fuller did not replace Robert Horton in the last two seasons of the show. Horton had already left the series before Fuller joined the cast. There were tensions between Ward Bond and Robert Horton on the set, with Bond spreading rumors about Horton's sexuality. However, the two men resolved their differences just two days before Bond's death. ¿Quieres tratar de hacerlo? ¿Qué pasó con ese idio? No lo... When Wagon Train premiered in 1957, Few knew that lead actor Ward Bond was already battling serious health issues. He suffered from high blood pressure and was instructed to cut back on his workload, but continued to consume alcohol while working on the series. During the first season, a harmonica player could often be heard in the background during evening campfire scenes, adding a melancholic touch to the show's theme song. However, this practice was discontinued by the second season when the main theme transitioned from an orchestrated composition to a trail song with lyrics. Robert Horton, one of the original cast members, outlived his co-stars and became the last surviving member of the Wagon Train cast, following Terry Wilson's death in 1999. Despite the show's simple premise and straightforward storytelling, 
it left a lasting impact on television history and its audience. What is air? Se parece a air. Está sola? Sí. In the first season of Wagon Train, Charlie Wooster was known for his medical knowledge, but this aspect of his character was surprisingly dropped in later seasons. Morgan Woodward holds the record for the most guests starring roles on both Gunsmoke and Wagon Train, with 19 and 11 appearances respectively. A popular myth surrounding Ward Bond, who starred in Wagon Train, claims that he was set to meet singer Johnny Horton in Dallas on the day he died to sign a contract for the show. However, this is false as Bond did not have the power to cast actors for the series. Nunca he hecho otra clase de trabajo, ¿entiendes? Pero papá. The TV series Wagon Train ran from 1957 to 1965 with seasons 1 through 6 and 8 featuring hour-long black and white episodes. Season 7, however, had a different format with 90-minute color episodes. In syndication, season 7 episodes were often aired separately on Saturdays, while the hour-long episodes were typically shown on weekdays. However, channels like Stars Encore Westerns and INSP now air season 7 episodes in sequence with the others during their weekday schedules. Robert Fuller, a cast member of Wagon Train, had an impact on future actors, and Western enthusiast Nancy Stafford and Clarence Gilliard Jr. both of them grew up watching Laramie and Wagon Train and later starred alongside Fuller. Ward Bond, another cast member, was diagnosed with high blood pressure but continued to work rigorously on Wagon Train. Despite his health condition, he refused to cut back on his work schedule, showing his dedication to the show. Es, es un hombre extraño, señor ¿Qué hacía antes? Both Ward Bond and John McIntyre, actors who starred in the 1957 TV series Wagon Train, had previously worked with director John Ford in his movies. Ward Bond, who played Major Seth Adams, had been deeply involved in ultra-right-wing politics which led to him being blacklisted in Hollywood for several years. However, in 1957, at the age of 54, he made a significant comeback with Wagon Train and became a star. The character of Charles Wooster, portrayed by Frank McGrath, had inconsistencies in his literacy over the seasons. In one episode, Bill Hawk scolds Wooster for looking at a book, implying that he was illiterate. However, in another episode, Wooster not only reads dialogue from Romeo, and Juliet with Nellie Jefferson, but also shows her a scrapbook he created with newspaper clippings of her performances, including comments he wrote about specific shows. Y no pienso morir para que le den otra medalla. Voy a regresar al fuerte. Robert Horton, known for his role in Wagon Train, missed 20 episodes in his final season due to his involvement in musical theater. His absence was a result of his pursuit of other creative opportunities, showcasing his versatility as a performer. Despite his absence, the show continued to captivate audiences and remained a popular choice for viewers. Horton's decision to prioritize his work in musical theater speaks to his diverse range of talents and interests, and his contributions to both television and theater continue to be celebrated. Dicho. No esté tan segura. Si estuviera aquí, se reiría en su cara. Usted nunca fue nada para él. In the critically acclaimed TV series Wagon Train that aired in 1957, a shocking incident occurred during its filming. The show's wardrobe department made a mistake in the costume of one of the main characters, which resulted in a tragic accident. Actor Frank McGrath, who played Charlie Wooster, was wearing a woolen shirt that had been accidentally treated with a chemical solvent. During a campfire scene, the solvent-treated shirt caught fire and McGrath suffered severe burns. The incident was a stark reminder of the dangers that actors face while filming, even in controlled studio environments. Despite the accident, McGrath continued to act in the series until its end in 1965, demonstrating his resilience and dedication to his craft. The tragic incident, however, left a lasting impact on the production team who took extra precautions to ensure the safety of their cast and crew members. ¿Qué objeto tiene asustarme tanto? ¿Y qué cree usted que hizo conmigo? Ah, oh, eso. If the 1957 TV series Wagon Train holds a special place in your heart, we'd love to hear your stories, share your memories and experiences related to this classic show that left a lasting impression on you. 
Perhaps it brought to life the spirit of adventure, or maybe it was the compelling characters that made you tune in each week. Whatever your connection, we'd be thrilled to hear about it. Let's engage in a lively conversation. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Together, let's celebrate the impact Wagon Train has had on our lives and its contribution to the world of television. Señor Macala, quisiera que se quedara a cenar. Gracias, señora Thomas. Encantado.